This segment of the Sweet Pete's Show is brought to you by Hamburger Mary's Jacksonville. Previously on Sweet Pete's The Show. Dang, I mean, come on. It's scary that they would send that out. You always want to put your best foot forward. When you have a bag that looks full on one hand and it's next to one that's half full, of course you know which one the customer is going to pick. And in terms of measuring, you pull, if you don't have a scale available, it gets very busy at times in, in Valentine's Day, and it's very chaotic, but go pull one from the shelf and use that as an example. If it looks like the one on the shelf, then it's passable. If it doesn't, then you need to keep packing. So Dane doesn't always start the field trips. It's um, whether you're the lucky group or not. I mean, if he walks through and he feels like doing a little trivia, he does a little trivia. It was probably the worst war for Americans, that's all, because it would pit a brother against <laughs> anyone, please, anyone. Is anyone out there? Brother, the Civil War, very good. Okay, no, you were there. You... All right, sorry about that. Dane's, uh... Extra talking is a double-edged sword. Who likes taffy? No, not me. Who wants to help me make a batch of taffy that you guys are going to take home with you? What takes so long? It, it just it, it just takes longer to rip. It just it just, it just doesn't rip. It's just, <laughs> Why don't you cut it? Hey, look. Oh my goodness! Put your paper. I'm yeah. gonna get you some scissors. Okay, and we're gonna good. go with a scissor that, that program. Would be good. Oh my god. I got a wife at home. I got a wife at the store. I've been in the candy business for 25 years. During that time, I've done a lot of things related to candy. Uh, my parents started a business here locally. They named it after my sister and I. And so I grew up in that, in that um, environment, and I learned a lot about chocolate in particular, learned a lot about candy and retail business as well. When we started Sweet Pete's, we were all at a point, uh, what I would describe as a transition in our lives. We realized very quickly that I needed to do something different. And so that's when we came up with Sweet Pete's. Valentine's is a big day in our industry. Uh, we've obviously been dealing with Valentine's in the candy industry for, you know, 10 years, roughly. This is my second Valentine's Day, so it's a little different from last year. This year was a lot more hectic. And preparing for it, there's really no easy way to prepare for Valentine's Day because it's one of those days that it just happens versus Christmas. Christmas, you have a whole month or so to prepare for it, but with Valentine's Day, it just kind of sneaks up on you. The main thing you want to do is capitalize on all the people that come in the door. Unlike some of our other holidays like Christmas, if you don't have something someone wants, they may come back. Valentine's Day, they're shopping the day before and they're not shopping again. So if you don't have their desired gift, they're going somewhere else. They're not coming back to you. So it's a race to just make sure you always have the product that they, the customers want. And everyone loves chocolate covered berries. When we buy strawberries for Valentine's Day, I wish I could say it was more scientific than it is. Uh, we uh, look at the sales from last year and we try to estimate what we think we're going to sell this year. Peter, yeah. what's, the most, uh, what's the biggest strawberry order you've ever had? If you, if you get too conservative, you're going to have a huge year with the strawberries. If you buy too many, you'll be stuck with them. I know we've done at least 100 box orders, but the usual thing that we do, I mean, back in those days, just one or two people. So you'd have a lot of traffic because you'd be doing several hundred flats, right? But everybody's got a box. So it's just like, they all sort of converge on your store. It's usually what, but um, we've had orders of like 50 or 100 bucks. We can't make the berries very far in advance. So it's just about making sure the berries are out, making sure they're packaged nicely, and really having everything so nice and full that people want to buy more. We have to come in very, very, very early in the morning to start dipping berries because you want them as fresh as possible. So preparing for Valentine's Day, there's no easy way to do it. You just have to get it done. Come in early and dip those berries and take care of the customers. That's just what we got to do.
Um, but this is the issue. I've got six printed and our internet just went out. <gasps> Come on, are, are you, you serious? Kidding? Are you serious? Shoot. Well, so Dan, when you're we gotta call IT and, and get them. Your <laughs> IT, Bear. <laughs> no, no, no. So the internet goes down. It goes down very fairly frequently. Uh, we have internet service like most of the country has in their home service or their commercial service and it's just acceptable to going down. Um, Dane is the person who chose the internet service that we have. He's the person who set up the internet service. Um, he's the person who buys the computers and buys the phone. So he, in my opinion, he needs to own the technical aspect of the business. I don't see the network. Does it work downstairs? Allison and I sort of share the role of IT. She says, I'm IT when something breaks, and I say, she's IT when something breaks. This is not good. Oh, this is really bad. Yeah. And he likes to sort of distance himself from the whole tech thing now, but um, he is our tech support. Great. So this is the only problem when we go to confirm it. It's just going to be a pain, because I'm going to print out the label. Yeah, I mean, the sooner we get shipping labels, the sooner we can get all this stuff out. So we need to get the shipping labels all out. All right, don't forget the card. Don't forget the bubble wrap. Don't forget to the blue you, tissue. Do you want to go to my house and print them out there? It's a lot quicker. You don't want to run out of ink in your printer, and I have another uh, I have another printer at home, so I'm more than willing to go home and make sure that we have these labels printed out, because if they don't get printed out, and you run out of ink here, and there's only so much time to get the shipping out because you're in a uh, tight time constraint, um, I was yeah, you know, willing to do that, I thought it would be a good idea. You're gonna call Comcast and tell No, them. I'm not gonna call Comcast. You do with Comcast, they won't even talk to me. It's not what do you want me to ship or do Comcast? Web box so I unplug to reset it. Um, you can, the router, let's see. That's the, uh, that's the modem. And the router is that guy right there. So just unplug it for yeah, the unplug Cisco it. one? Unplug, unplug it everything from it or just the... I would uh, start with the router, unplug it, and then that's let it... That's the one it that says internet? Yeah, let, let, it, let it sit for 30 seconds and then replug it in. But do I unplug all four cords or just the one that says internet? Just the power. What well, just didn't make sense what Dane was saying to me, and I... I, um, Dane and I have a good working dynamic. We sort of know, we have a little dance we do. So I, I knew that Dane was just trying to say anything to shut me up so that that router didn't become his problem. And the, you know, the less the answer made sense, then it's like he doesn't know, so I won't ask him anymore. And ultimately that's what happened. <laughs> yeah, it causes a little bit of consternation, but you know, as we focus on the problem, we uh, solved it. And it all worked out, so. I'm not a tech guy, right? But I, uh, if you take our tempering equipment and that's not lit up, there's a pretty good chance it's not getting power. There's actually about a 100% chance <laughs> that there's not power going to it. I imagine a router is pretty similar in that regard. All right, well, we have light now. Okay. So we got stuff in the right direction. Yeah. I guess I'm gonna be IT now. I've always thought that you've had what it takes. Are you looking for a fun night out on the town? Come visit Jacksonville's very own Hamburger Mary's, a genuine good time where you can be yourself and enjoy a spectacular show with great food and fantastic drinks. Hamburger Mary's. Are you looking for a fun night out on the town? Well, come visit us at Jacksonville's very own Hamburger Mary's, a genuine good time where you can be yourself and enjoy a spectacular show with great food and drinks. Hamburger Mary's, eat, drink, and be merry. The segment of The Sweet Pete Show is brought to you by Tax Defense Network. is um, kind of unique. We do Amazon and um, it's a little different. I come in every morning and what I try to do is take a look at Amazon to see what kind of orders we have and basically I'm pulling the orders, I'm assessing what we need and if it's something that we don't have made I have to write it a list down to make sure that everyone knows this needs to be made, it needs to get done in a certain amount of time so that I can have it shipped out. 
once I get all of those orders prepared, then I'm shipping, I'm preparing them, and then I personally take them to have them shipped to Dame. And he does mostly all of the packaging and printing out the labels and things for the packages to be shipped out. I usually like to line up all the packaging material that is necessary to actually get the shipping out. And uh, uh, yeah, I like to have some type of process flow so we don't get confused. Um, and of course, Valentine's ever wants to make sure that things are going forward and things are shipping and uh, they like to help. And so <laughs> sometimes those processes get a little bit um, uh, pushed to the side and uh, we have lots of helpers, uh, which actually doesn't end up helping a lot of much. So. Oh man, when Ms. Leonard came through the door, I was so surprised. You know, that was my English teacher. You know, she taught me a lot. I have a lot of great moments in class. She, she pulled me through and showed me a lot of things, and I respect her and I love her for that. But when I seen her come through, through the door, you know, during my field trip, it was like even better. It was like, wow, you know, I get to represent for my school and my teacher. And can you, um, can one of you want me to go take your guys on? Yeah, sorry, Pete, man. I know you wanted to, you know, be a part of the uh, situation, man. But you know, it wasn't like that this time. I had to, had to do my thing with, with my teacher. You know, you my other teacher, but maybe next time. Yeah, you know. <laughs> There's plenty of other people who can take pictures. Why do they need me to do it? I'm a little more, a little blurry. <laughs> well, thank you guys. Uh, we appreciate you coming back to Sweet Pete's. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed making taffy with me. And just remember, the candy man can. <laughs> He's just funny. He's just a kind of a quirky guy. And, um, you know, when he gets in a good, giddy mood, he'll just throw something out there that, you know, makes me laugh. And, so that was sort of funny because, you know, of course the candy man can. I'd just never seen Pete sort of own it like that. So um, it just made me laugh. I suppose it means that there's sort of this uh, mystique around those who are making candy, right? Because they have all these powers to do things with sugar and other ingredients that have sort of a magical quality to them. If yeah, Pete tricked me out one day, he was like, he said the candy man can and it's like, you know, we're in the heat of the moment and everything is all crazy and haywire in the store and he comes out and says, the candy man can. So that kind of motivated everybody to, you know, to get things started and we know we had a busy day today so we just got it done and everybody had fun and everything went okay. The candy man is the one who's making it all happen, right? Candy man can. <laughs> Do you owe thousands in IRS back taxes? Are you worried that the IRS will seize your bank account, possibly even your paycheck? Tax Defense Network can help. We're an A-plus rated Jacksonville-based tax resolution company with over 35 years experience in IRS negotiations. Don't face the IRS alone. Call 866-FIGHT-90 today. We've resolved over $93 million of small business and individual tax debt. Let our attorneys fight for you too. Call 866-344-4890 for a free consultation. Pete, do you think that um, they really came out of twelve dollars a pound, or you think Dane just said that because he don't want them hand wrapping it? Yeah, I always says. He, he says it to everybody. I don't think they ever tried hand wrapping costume. Oh, that! I thought you were talking about. Oh no, I think they. I got, think he I told think... them to run it through the machine and see if they could do it one more time through the machine. That's what my guess would be. <laughs> <laughs>
Why did they say? Didn't 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 um, they meet? They with told you. me they would hand wrap it. Yeah. But he said no 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 hand wrapping, not gonna work. There's no point. I shouldn't hand wrap it. Well, what do you think the twelve dollars a pound? I think he would. I, I think it's just BS. Yeah. B to the S. Yeah, B to the S. So sometimes we use that term B to the S when it comes to Dane because sometimes he's full of B to the S. Um, we love Dane. I mean, we've had enough partners to know, like, it's, it's a relationship. And sometimes when Dane either wants a certain outcome or, more likely than not, he doesn't want to slow down and listen to what he's being told and, and digest that. He just wants to run and get something done. <laughs> I mean, I could be wrong, but I just have a feeling that, because Scott was desperate to want that business, and he kept saying, I'll do it just to keep my guys working. And then Dane was like, no, it doesn't make sense. we got to stop hand wrapping it. He's always been on that kick, though. But I think that you, you've you got to start with doing the product right if you're going to change the, 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 um, the yeah, manufacturing process. Yeah, I mean, it is, it is what it is. You, when, you, when you can't you, it's just... It's going to rip off the salt in that machine. I don't know that he's entirely familiar with the process. And he sometimes wants it to be a certain way and kind of rearranges that in his mind when it, maybe it's not exactly that way. And so he'll sort of err on the side of uh, efficiencies versus what the product is or, or what it needs to be or what the, you know, the quality of it. Sometimes Dane, you know, he always feel like, you know, he's always right in the situation, but you know, when we wrap that caramel, you know, people want the salt to be on the caramel. And you know, I don't think a machine is gonna actually get it done like we really need it done and so it to hold its firmness and everything together or whatnot, but things have to be done right and I don't know if the machine is gonna get it done right. I try to make the most uh, unique thing I can make that, that's of the best quality that, and then well, let's figure out a way to make it efficient later. I think he's coming from the opposite side. He'll say things and make uh, with certain underlying assumptions that are B to the S. And so uh, you, you can't let that stand or else you'll end up with a product that nobody wants it. B to the S is Nora. <laughs> Hey, did you know that um, somebody just wrote a card where they their their name for their loved one is Puppy, and Dane has a name for Sarah. Oh yeah, what is it? I don't even. I don't even never mind. I don't need to know. Boo Bear. <laughs> so you know, if you're in love and you have a spouse, sometimes you name each other little pet names, and my wife's Boo Bear, and that's a familiar uh, name that we use for her. I need a name. You like that? I need a name. <laughs> I want a you name. Need something. <laughs> you need a name. And it needs to be nice. <laughs> Preferably. Uh, you know, it came a moment where there was an opportunity to uh, give his wife a, a this type of name, a pet name, and he was uh, lacking uh, in that department for whatever reason. I don't have a nickname from Pete, and I don't have a nickname for Pete. We're not particularly sweet, gushy kind of people. I have a nickname for Allison. We just never, we're not the nickname type of people, really. I don't think she has one for me. She, at least she doesn't say it to me. She's maybe one that she talks about me. <laughs> um, but so we were just talking about maybe coming up with a nickname. And I've asked Pete on plenty of times, let's do a little more hand holding. Let's just try to be a little sweeter. Um, and he, I get some pushback on that. See what I can come Nothing up with. Nothing comes to mind? Nothing jumps out at you? <laughs> well, well, what? Pete, how's it going? Um, you guys got the... Um... We're getting something done. You know, I'm just trying to smooth things out and, uh, you know, try to uh, you know, give Pete an out, so to speak, and make Allison feel like uh, she's loved. So. The pretzels um, for... Uh, yeah, we'll have, we'll have uh, the pretzels for Erica. He's good at that. I, I love it when he does that sometimes. So other times I hate it, but he, he's bailed me out of a couple ones. <laughs> Thanks, Dane. <laughs> I'm still waiting for my nickname. Cherry cordials are one of my favorites. It's my favorite thing to eat and to make. Uh, they are made 
at least we do this by soaking our cherries in Grand Marnier. Uh, they soak for several days, absorbing all the uh, cognac. Then they are we we put a uh, we make a fondant mixture. Fondant is a way to manipulate sugar, so it's green in, in a specific way, so it has a creamy texture. So when you bite into a fondant or you t taste a piece of fondant, it uh, it sort of melts in your mouth, so you can't even taste the sugar crystals because they're so fine. Now we coat the cherry with fondant and then give it a coating of dark chocolate. Now the fun starts after you make it because what happens is. Uh, in that fondant, you've added an enzyme, and the enzyme is breaking down the sugar. So over a period of a couple of days, that sugar begins to liquefy, and you have a cherry uh, Grand Marnier liquid center, which is, uh, is one of my all-time favorites, and I prefer them in dark. Sweet Pete. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's good. <laughs>